Hey everyone, Tim here from Snap Attack. Let's dig into this week's threat snapshot. So today we're going to be looking at some new intelligence released by our partner Mandiant. And this technique is being attributed to APT29. Uh, this group is linked to the Russian Foreign Intelligence Services and it's tracked by different names. Uh, maybe you've heard the CrowdStrike name, Cozy Bear, or Microsoft's name, Noblium for them. Uh, same group, again, they are uh, a foreign espionage threat actor primarily targeting European and NATO countries. And this technique here that we're gonna talk about today is abusing a built-in Windows feature called credential roaming. So giving a little bit of context, you know, what exactly is credential roaming? Um, typically, again, when I've seen this more in penetration tests or security audits, um, this is gonna be used in smaller Windows environments. Um, you do have PKI, and really the goal here is to be able to take um, email certificates, so S-MIME, um, the things that you would use to you know, sign and encrypt emails, and be able to use those on multiple machines. Um, large organizations typically are going to have smart cards, so again, your certificate is going to reside on that card. So when you, you know, pl plug that into each laptop that you need to you know, authenticate to or do email certificates, um, that's going to go with you. Um, if you are in, say, a smaller organization, think like a school, a university, um, maybe a hospital setting um, where, you know, you might not have a smart card or you might not be putting that into each machine, but you still need to use that authentication mechanism or um, or, or realistically signing emails um, that can roam with you when you sign in. So you can see here in this Active Directory environment, um, they have that certificate um, that's being assigned to one computer and then with credential roaming that certificate is going to be stored in Active Directory. It can go across AD servers through replication, and um, eventually this would go to any other computer that you sign into um, just to make sure that that configuration is then pulled down from the domain controller and replicated. So interesting technique. Um, this has been around since um, Windows 2003, so it's been around for a while. Um, it has changed a little over the years. Um, back around Windows 7, they removed the ability to actually store, you know, username, password, plain text, plain text credentials. Obviously, lots of abuse there, but it's still widely used for, you know, certificates um, in the modern sense. So there's a couple of different, um, you know, LDAP properties that you're going to see around here, and and this is where they uncovered the actual technique itself. Is um, when you do have these credential roaming um, configured. There's going to be a scheduled task on the machine. There's going to be two built-in Windows DLLs. You'll see them here, this like DIMS job DLL. And this is what's going to actually process that um, Active Directory object, um, that property that's stored there, and pull down that certificate and install that locally. So they did find that um, there is a vulnerability here that can be abused, which APT29 was abusing to uh, execute remote code on here. Um, scrolling down here, they have a really good write-up here, and this, this POC here is what we're going to actually demonstrate today. So I'm going to hop on over to Snap Attack, and we're going to take a look at what this technique looks like. So this is going to be our credential roaming. Um, this was assigned a new CVE, so CVE 2022-30170. Uh, this was patched uh, back in September by Microsoft. Obviously, we have October to kind of soak, and now... Um, here early November, we're going to be talking about and publicly disclosing this vulnerability. So um, that's kind of the timeline here. So if your systems are patched and up to date, this would not be affected. Um, obviously, if it isn't patched, then this is something you may want to take a look at from a detection or threat hunting perspective. So um, we do have a, a small environment here. We've got a Windows domain controller. We've got Windows 10 as a victim machine. Uh, obviously, this needs to be installed first, so there is a, a group policy that you can configure to um, turn on the you know, credential um, sharing and the credential roaming. And uh, we're going to just kind of take that POC code that we saw earlier over here, and we're going to run that in a PowerShell window. And we can go through and we can talk through what those steps are going to look like and what's really going on. So I'm going to go back here and kind of zoom in. Um, this get AD user, um, they're, they're fetching a couple of properties. Um, the one we're most interested about is this MSPKI account credentials. Um, that's where that um, actually the malicious script is going to be inserted. But it's really just getting the user object. Again, this can be any name. And in order to, again, be querying and really setting these user objects, we do have to have you know domain administrator activity or permission. So this isn't really a privilege escalation. 
Um, we do have a malicious string here. Um, you can decode this if you want to. They have the, the kind of plain text decoded here um, where you can see this is a directory traversal. So instead of being um, where it's going to install that path here in Microsoft system certificates, my certificates, it's going to use directory traversal to back out a couple folders and write to the app data folder. Um, but it's going to go to the um, start menu program startup. So this, instead of, again, dropping a certificate, is going to drop a malicious.bat file. And this batch file is going to do the harmful uh, start calculator. So never, never a POC without popping a calc. Um, so really, again, you could detect on this string. Obviously, this is going to change and is easy and trivial for an attacker to change. Really, what I would key in here, and we'll talk about detection, is um, doing the set AD user, um, where they're set setting this attribute. And then the next part of this attack here is you actually have to bump the timestamp on the PKI roaming so that that service that's running on the endpoint knows that, hey, um, this value has changed. I need to go down and pull an updated certificate for it. So we can see here that we ran that for a snap attack user's account. Um, we do have um, our capture agent running on this Windows 10 machine, but we're actually going to log in over here to that victim machine via RDP. Uh, because this is a startup task that's going to be triggered um, when the user logs in. So this is a great persistence mechanism. Um, this also works fantastically as lateral movement, especially if you know you do have credential roaming in, in your network. Um, more than likely, you have a reason to log into multiple machines. So if this affected user where this was set logs into 10, 50 different machines throughout you know, a period of time, um, this code is going to download to each of those machines and execute there. So it is pretty interesting. Um, so we did log in here. You're going to see some of those, you know, startup tasks and just kind of jumping around. We do see that calc actually does pop up. Um, interesting stuff that we can see from the timeline here. So I'm on the domain controller. We do have some detections here, especially around this um, PowerShell log for writing the roaming credential. We can pivot over to Windows 10, our victim machine, and we can see a couple around the startup folder. Again, this is just a very vanilla technique at this point, but how we actually write to the startup folder is the interesting piece. Uh, if we want to pivot over to the process graph, so this is on our Windows 10 uh, victim machine. Um, when you do have a, a scheduled task, or really a startup task here, um, we can see that that scheduled task is going to um, copy this over and then it's going to launch this. So we see a cmd.exe that's going to be launching that malicious.batch file, which again is going to then start calculator. So this does show up nicely here on the process graph and this is what it would look like. Um, definitely different ways that we can detect and hunt for this. So let's talk through some of those now. So obviously one of the more interesting ones is to take a look at writing that roaming credential um, and setting that value. Um, the easiest way to do that is that set AD user uh, PowerShell commandlet. Um, specifically, we're going to be looking for that MSPKI account credentials in the script block, te script block text. Um, you can see that here in some of the examples. So again, that malicious value is going to be in that variable. Um, this would work very well. Um, again, when we're doing some local testing, uh, using ADUC and trying to manually set this value because it is a binary variable is a little bit harder to do. So um, there are different ways that you can set and configure this. Again, this is Active Directory. So if you have your own um, you know, LDAP tools, you can set that value. But um, looking for you know, anything kind of setting this value would be very interesting. Um, although definitely would be some um, noise and false positives potentially if you are using credential roaming you know, widely in your environment. The other piece, and again, if you want to bundle this is more of a compound detection, looking for these events in the context of, let's say, um, a startup folder, um, either a file creation event. So this here, I'm looking Sysmon 11, so file creation, um, looking for things that are going to be writing to that, you know, Microsoft Windows start menu program startup folder. Um, definitely some tuning that you could do for this. Obviously, that startup folder is used by um, different programs, a lot of times auto updaters or things that you want to run on start. Um, it is an indicator as a persistence mechanism, but it can be kind of noisy. So this, again, low confidence, this would be suitable for threat hunting. A um, little bit more interesting, again, if we want to look at the process creation events, um, we can take a look for um, ones in the app data folder, which again is going to be local to the user or program data. So that would affect all users on the machine. 
Um, again, with a directory traversal here, we're ready in app data roaming. So um, this one is more effective to be placed here, but um, depending on the, the length of the string and some other values, you might be able to back that out to other folders. Um, so this here we can see is hit a couple of times, including on our uh, captured threat. We can see that command line here looking for CMD, you know, that is launching this uh, folder or this file here, this malicious.bat, which again is going to spawn calc. So this would be a, a high quality detection. Um, I could actually go ahead with snap attack here, one click deploy that. Um, we'll do Sentinel 1 and uh, make it very easy if you wanted to, you know, deploy for, you know, these detections to make sure that you are, you know, protected against these sort of threats. Um, you could also do a search here and do a hunt, which again, I would probably do for this in more of a production environment, just given that there are going to be a lot of other startup folders and uh, tools that are launching in this manner. So really, again, just in summary, this is really a novel technique of how we can use that credential roaming to do a very known and vanilla technique of executing code from startup folders. And it's really that combination that hasn't really been seen before that's really interesting here. So if you're concerned about APT29, other threats like this, um, definitely stay tuned to our Threat Snapshots. It's a weekly series. Like, subscribe, and we'll see you next time.